during the healing phase after surgery to make sure my implants heal. So whether you're one of my patients or a patient from their practice, here's my advice. Uh, having done thousands of these types of surgeries and seen thousands of patients come through my office, this is the advice I would give to my mom, this advice I'd give to my dad, my brother, my sister, and of course to my patients. And so the number one thing is you have to listen to your doctor. And um, if your doctor's a really great communicator, he's gonna tell you to do some things that are really, really critical. Um, so the first thing after surgery, um, now here's the one thing I'll talk about too. I recommend all patients wait to get their uh, teeth until the next day. Um, I used to do same day teeth. And I believe that uh, what happens in that scenario is patients oftentimes uh, don't have a great experience when they see their teeth for the first time, they're numb, um, they're, they've been sedated all day, they're really, really groggy. And so I highly, highly recommend that uh, you convince your, your dentist to have the teeth put in the next day. Um, the biggest question people say, well, won't I be in a lot of pain? And if you've gone to my Facebook live page, you see this on YouTube also, um, I always ask patients where they're at on a scale of one to 10 as far as pain. And uh, they'll consistently tell me it's so somewhere between one and three out of 10. Uh, and so if, you, if they follow my recommendations as far as food or as far as on their post-op uh, pain management, well, let's talk about that. So this is kind of the, the purpose of the video, which is basically to help people know what they can do to uh, be able uh, to have success. So doctor spends four or five hours, uh, anywhere from two to five hours in surgery. Um, you wake up. Now you want to make sure you, you do everything right over the next little while to uh, make sure your implants heal. So um, let's start with day one. It's really important that you understand what the post-op instructions are. Um, and so this is why I ask a lot of questions before the surgery, because once you already have had the surgery, you're going to be uh, kind of out of it the rest of the day. And so you're not going to really be conscious. So this is another tip. Make sure you have uh, your friend or family, whoever's going to be driving you the day of surgery, make sure they come with you uh, at the pre-surgery or at the visit right before surgery so they have a chance to ask the doctor or the staff questions. Uh, because if you know what's going on, but your bride or your caretaker um, doesn't know, um, that can create a lot of stress for them and uh, it can create stress for the dental office also. And so in our office, we actually have a caretaker consent form and uh, we give that to our patients. They have to have that signed by them and the caretaker before we actually will schedule surgery. And the reason again is because uh, we're not great communicators by nature. Oftentimes we just forget what's important to tell people. And so that consent basically tells them what they're gonna experience as the caretaker, what's gonna be important for them to make sure they manage the day of surgery. And uh, if everyone's on the same page, everyone's happy. Okay, so on day one, it's really important. Um, and, and again, I'm, I'm giving you kind of advice on uh, what I do for my practice and, and kind of tell you what I would tell you to communicate with the doctor or wherever you're at. So number one, take all the medications as prescribed, right? So this is where you need a caretaker to help you too because you may be a little drowsy, but it's really important that uh, that you take medications by the clock. You don't want to wait till you're in pain and then start taking medication. So in my office, we do ibuprofen and Tonal and we, uh, we have that uh, every four hours, um, we do a low dosage of uh, ibuprofen and Tonal. Um, second thing is make sure you keep your head elevated. It's really important you don't go back and take a nap and lay flat or lay on your side because if you do that, you're going to wake up and all that gravity is going to have pulled, will have pulled blood um, and inflammation to that site. And now it's going to take a good week to week and a half, two weeks for that inflammation to go away. Okay. So make sure you do that. Uh, next thing is um, make sure you're icing. I recommend 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off um, whenever you're awake. Uh, so if you, if you sleep, I don't necessarily think that you should uh, go and uh, have to keep eyes on you to sleep, but um, anytime you're awake, you're icing, and that's for the first 48 hours. Um, make sure you avoid the sutures, and I tell this to the uh, caretaker, uh, caretakers also. It's really, really important that uh, if you see the see yourself, tell them if you see my me kind of playing with my sutures, please make me stop, um, because if you're pulling sutures out um, or you're pushing bacteria that's in your mouth, or all of our mouths have bacteria in them. You just want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, number, I uh, see here, uh, see uh, number five, I think. Um, make sure you keep your hands out of your mouth. 
I mean, it seemed kind of funny. But a lot of people want to pull it down. They want to take, take pictures and stuff. Keep your hands out of your mouth. Um, and don't be pulling your lip down because sometimes pulling your lip down can cause the suture to, to get pulled also. And again, we're trying to avoid everything. Make sure that um, we don't create any more swing or inflammation. Okay. All right. So I want you to drink lots of protein shakes the day of surgery. Well, not lots, but um, it's important that you make sure that uh, you get some uh, calories inside your body. Because if you're not uh, uh, giving yourself the, the right amount of calories, then you're not going to heal well either. Okay. Um, uh, stay hydrated. Drink lots of water. Don't use straws because straws will create pressure. And the pressure is going to make it so that uh, you start bleeding again. That's another thing is it's totally normal for you to bleed the day of surgery. Okay. Um, that's that's so normal. Um, because that's the way most of the people that come, not most, but a large majority of the patients that come through my office have infection in their existing teeth. Well, the body has a way of flushing itself. It has a way of, of getting rid of um, uh, the infections that we, we're cleaning out. And that is it, it, it bleeds. And so don't think anything's wrong. Now, if you wake up the next day and you're still bleeding a lot, yes, um, reach out to your doctor. Um, but a little bit of just uh, uh, bleeding is completely normal and not to be worried about, okay? But stay hydrated so you don't, you know, in the, in the case you are bleeding a little bit more, that you don't get yourself dehydrated. And then you can have low blood pressure. And that can create a whole series of, of things. Um, uh, you do want to rinse your mouth. So we give people syringes uh, in little bags with our post-op instructions. And so if you go home and um, you have a protein shake or you eat some uh, something that's completely soft, uh, like uh, some eggs or some uh, uh, some soup or maybe some mashed potatoes, um, make sure you rinse it with, we, we, we put a, a Paradex uh, or it's called chlorhexidine gluconate. We give it, it's a prescription we give to patients. Um, but you want to make sure you keep the site clean. You don't want to get any, even a, even a protein shake or something really soft, we just want that over the site. It can create... Uh, potential early stage infection, okay? Um, another thing is stay positive. A lot of times patients, they go through surgery and um, they, they, get, they get really stressed. And um, I really believe that a, a healthy mindset, healthy attitude, um, it cures everything. I truly believe that. I believe that if you, if you stay positive um, and you uh, stay upbeat, that you're gonna heal much faster, okay? All right, so let's talk about the temporary teeth. The temporary teeth, um, that we give our patients, and the, and I hope that it's it's standardized across um, you know most doctors, but I, I truthfully I don't see it uh, a lot. I so your dent so the teeth that we give are going to be screwed in. They're going to be beautiful. Um, and if anyone's seen my smile reveals, um, you're going to see that people's teeth look amazing. Um, however, um, they're not built for chewing. They're not. I mean, I tell people it's, it's kind of my evil plan. But I tell them on the front end, like that these teeth are not not for chewing, they're not for grinding, they're strictly just for confidence. They're just to help you make you feel yourself, feel good about yourself while you heal. Um, but uh, I give no illusion that I'm trying to give them teeth to chew or eat with. It's it's quite the opposite. So what that means is the teeth in the back are going to be very flat, okay? And that's normal. Um, the teeth uh, will also be uh, they're not going to be long. They're not going to extend all the way back. They'll go as far back as the last implant, but there'll be no extension back because there, that, if that was the case, um, you'd break your temporaries very easily. Uh, it's, um, let's see here. Uh, it's really important that you're rinsing um, really well with, with your temporary teeth. And what happens all the time is patients uh, feel like as they heal over, over uh, the three or four months they're healing, um, they feel like they have space it develops underneath there and that that's actually the case i tell patients expect that don't be frustrated or mad that's just god's way of remodeling your tissue and so uh if you expect it and realize that you're going to have to clean as that tissue goes down which is normal you're going to have to clean harder and harder if you stop cleaning then you're going to cause inflammation on your gums which is potentially could lead to uh, bone loss and even potential implant uh, uh, complications and problems where either the implant is not doesn't integrate, or um, you get an infection and the implants be taken out, and so it's really important that you you clean really well. So if you notice that and you're looking at your temporaries, you see that um, they, they have, there's like some long edges, um, or it's it's not rough, or sorry, it's rough. Um, in those areas, uh, you need to go back to your dentist and have him adjust it. Um, the most important thing, biggest complication that we see, number one, number one complication is lack of hygiene, 
or, or patient compliance. And so we want you to be able to clean. But if we've created a temporary where it's not cleansable, that is something you need to have adjusted in the first week. After the week, first week, we really don't want to take the temporary on and off. And so um, we want to make sure that you have it adjusted. Uh, really, um, uh, a dentist that's done this a lot is going to make sure your temporary is super, super cleansable because they understand that's the biggest problems we have is uh, keeping uh, everything clean right there. Um, another word about the temporary teeth, um, you can start to use uh, you can start to use a water pick after about two to three weeks. Um, the biggest risk with the water pick early on is that you will cause the sutures to uh, to rip. And so we just want to make sure that after after this, you know, after the tissues kind of come together, and we're not worried about it, um, uh, you know, a, a tissue coming apart. At that point, you can start to uh, to water pick. Up until that point, you're just going to use a syringe or the mouth rinse to keep your mouth nice and clean. It's totally fine to brush your teeth. Uh, you just don't want to um, be brushing onto the gums, causing uh, irritation or inflammation around the, the, the gums and the implants. Uh, now, here's another thing, too. Is, um, speech will be off. It's totally normal for you to wake up or, or get your device and be like, I can't talk. I, I pre-frame my patients to realize that that's normal. For, you know, for all your life, you had a different set of teeth. Now we just gave you something completely different. Your tongue has to connect back to your brain and figure out, okay, how do I say and talk these the same way? And so the thing is, the only way that I could wake you up or um, give you teeth that, where you wouldn't have any problems with speech would be to give you back the exact same teeth that you don't like, <laughs> right? So if you can speak perfectly right out of surgery, it's, it's probably because you've got the exact same teeth, which you're probably not going to have about either. So it's normal. Now, there are times when doctors, and I see this often, and I even did this early on in my career, where you lose reference to where the back of the teeth were. And if it's grossly off and, and the tongue doesn't have enough space or it has too much space, it's kind of, a, it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, then in, in that case, uh, uh, it, it should be adjusted. But um, I tell people in that case, uh, let's wait till we get to the, after you're all healed, wait to four months, then we'll come back and we'll revisit that conversation. 99% of the time patients come back, they're speaking great, their tongue is adapted and they're good. But if you're like, you know, two months out and you can't speak, then um, it's possible that your doctor has uh, maybe overcalculated all in good faith and good, in, you know, good intentions. And, um, and so you have to just go in, but don't don't let them take off the temps um, during that uh, a critical hearing, healing phase. Here's the deal with the healing. You may wake, you know, you may get your first set of teeth, and and there's a really one or two responses. In my office, I can honestly say that 99% of the time, patients are ecstatic about their teeth. Every once in a while, I have a patient that that's like, oh, I, I they're too white, or um, or you know. Uh, where, where it's like they, they, they were looking for chocolate and I gave them vanilla um, despite my best efforts. Even in those efforts, I, I also tell my patients, listen, once these teeth go in, uh, we, we, can't, we can't be playing with them. Um, we can't be going back and forth and uh, uh, changing them because if we're taking the teeth on and off while they're healing, um, then they're not going to heal properly. So this is where you have to have a little bit of faith. It might be a little uncomfortable. But uh, you'll have a bigger risk. If, if you have a doctor that's a pleaser, um, meaning well-intentioned, but he, he's just so worried that a patient's going to be mad at him or her, then uh, and, they, and they take your temps off like a month out, it could completely damage all of your implant integration and healing. Uh, and so, so uh, don't push a doctor to do something he doesn't feel comfortable with. Uh, and, and, and this is why I communicate a ton up front. It's so important just to to trust the process, ask all the questions up front. Um, I, 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 in my, in my attempts, I never promise perfection because the reality is that I don't know what perfect is for you. You really need to have, it's called the law of contrast. You have your original teeth or dentures. You go into the first set and now you have something to contra contrast it with. It's like dating, right? <laughs> the more people you date, the more clear you get about what you want. So once you have your original teeth and then something to look at, now you become a better educated person about what you want. And day one, right after surgery, is not a great day to be making decisions, right? Uh, because everything is so new. And I get this all the time. Doc, we do this, this, this. I'm like, trust me, just trust me. And the things that are so important to them on day one, they come back up to healing going, oh, it's great. 
And so you got to remember, you're going to have sensory overload. You know, everything's going to feel so crazy and, 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 and weird in your mouth. So you really have to just prepare yourself that, listen, they're going to look gorgeous or they're going to look good. But hopefully they're going to look gorgeous. But the inside's going to feel foreign. You can't speak awesome right out the bat. You're not going to be able to chew, and that's good. Um, and they're going to feel bulky. That's the other thing is no matter what, the teeth are going to feel bulky. Okay, that's because anything that's different in your mouth, the, the tongue goes wild and crazy and it's trying to find to make sense of it. And so it's going to give you the sensation that something's not right, that it's too bulky. You're not a great judge of that at the beginning, you know, and that's the thing is you have to trust your doctor that he knows what he's doing or she knows what he's doing. Be careful, right? right? Matter of fact, I would love to have a female dentist in my practice. If you guys know one, that's awesome. Please. I would love to. Have, I mean, ideally, I go to all female uh, uh, physicians myself i think they're the best because they're better communicators anyways i i kind of detract here but um so if you know one let me know text me email me but uh, let's get back on subject here um the big thing i think about with um all on four is that um you have to be prepared you have to understand what you're doing at you, you have to communicate super clear with the doctor your expectations and you have to trust the process and so the temporaries are always the biggest thing for concern um, let's see, I wrote some other things down here now that I'm at my office. Uh, I can focus a little more. Um, let's see, speech troubles. Um, teeth are monoshaded. Yes. So people will sometimes say, well, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm, the, can you can you change the teeth in the temporaries to look more natural? Um, I tell people that in the end, we're going to custom shade them exactly the way you want. Um, and we'll have a custom shade. And we're going to basically use lots of different colors. We'll use grays and and, and uh, blues and, and everything to make the teeth pop and look natural. In temporaries, though, we have a limited amount of teeth we can choose from. And um, and so if the teeth look a little bit like um, they're a little bit like that, they should. You know, the, the, they're temporary teeth. That uh, And so don't get too stressed about it. Just know that it's going to change a lot in the, in the finals. Um, let's see here. Now, as far as the first two weeks, okay, so that's the word about temporaries. In the first two weeks, uh, there's areas that you can't rinse. Uh, make sure that you you talk to your doctor because after you've reached two weeks, the doctor should never be taking that device off, okay? Um, unless there's like an emergency or you're in so much pain and, and the risks outweigh the reward. Um, if your bite's off a ton, so we have our patients come back, you know, uh, the day after surgery to get their temps, we check the bite when they're not numb, and then we have them come back a week to uh, two weeks later to check their bite one more time. But if your bite's hitting really hard, you don't want to go four months with it like that, okay? You want to definitely make sure it's adjusted. But they can adjust that in the mouth. They don't have to take the device out. Um, if you're biting your tongue, that's something that's not normal. You should make sure that, I mean, it is. it will feel full. But if you're biting your tongue consistently, um, then they probably should adjust that also. And that can be adjusted in the mouth without taking it out. Um, if you're biting your cheeks, same thing. The first few days, not a great not a great time to make that decision. It's when you're, you've been out uh, a week and if you're still biting it, um, then they can adjust that pretty easily also. Um, but the first, you know, first couple of days, if people haven't had back teeth, oftentimes they'll bite their cheek and that's completely normal. Okay. It's like your tissue's gotten lazy. And so you really have to uh, give it some time to make it uh, so your cheek starts to pull out of the way. You start to use those uh, muscles again um, to, to keep your cheeks out of the way when you bite down. Okay. So at three weeks to four months, you know, uh, it's important that you your tissue is going to change. Like I said, and you're going to get food caught in there. The biggest thing is make sure you rinse it out with a water pick. Keep it super clean. Um, but don't rinse too much. If you rinse too much, it can cause trauma also. So especially on the front, if your doctor doesn't do any gum grafting, if you rinse really hard here on the lower, you can cause trauma, and trauma can lead to bone loss and inflammation, irritation, and create more problems. So just be really careful. Uh, see, don't give... Uh, now, this is the big thing. You can't eat. <laughs> you can eat, but don't eat um, uh, really hard foods. And so I tell my patients that uh, – make sure I'm, I don't want to get a – okay, hold on here. One second. Turn that off so I don't get – there we go. So I don't get a phone call here. <clears throat> don't give in a temptation of chewing and eating. Remember, the temps were not built to chew or eat with. If the temps break – don't be mad. I tell my patients that if you break the temps, they are your responsibility. It will be an inconvenience, um, and and you'll have to come in to have them fixed, and we'll get you in right away. 
But uh, I tell people that if, if you're breaking your attempts, that means you're putting too much force on them. So if you're a grinder or you're a clencher and you just generate a lot of force, then I always give my patients the option. I say, listen, if you think that you're going to grind or clench your teeth, then don't wear the lowers. Meaning that we, we have the lowers made, but we don't put them in until four months. And this may seem extreme to people, but if you're a, a severe uh, grinder or clencher, I can't control that. And, and you can't either. And so if you have an implant fell or the, or the device breaks, um, you're going to be responsible to pay the difference. And that's frustrating to patients. But again, I don't, I don't like to be responsible for things I can't control. And I think most doctors should feel that way. But people keep breaking their temps, you're going to risk breaking or, or the implants not healing. Okay. And so make sure you st don't give in to temptation. Don't chew or eat on things. Let's talk about diet. Diet is so critical. Okay. So it's okay to push your teeth together up and down. But what you don't want to do is if you've seen like a cow when they bite, when you, when you chew, we all do this. We're not cows, but we have the same motion when we, we bite down and we make a lat lateral movement and then go down, up, sideways, down, over, up. So when we go this direction, sideways, lateral movement, that's the chewing aspect. That's when we're in danger of causing implants to fail. Any horizontal movement on implants causes micro movements that basically sends flags to the body that, hey, I don't know what this is. And now the body, instead of integrating or healing around, it's going to wall off and uh, basically isolate and it's not going to heal. So that's why you don't want to chew. So I tell my patients here, I, I'm very, we give actually a list of uh, 50 uh, foods that you, uh, you can eat. Um, but let me just kind of give you an idea. I tell them, you know, pizza off the menu, 100%, no pizza, <laughs> no, uh, no steak, no chicken, no hamburgers. Like the all American diet is off. And I say, I make them sign consents realizing that you may think that the biggest expense is going to be financially. And I would, I would argue that it's actually more, uh, uh, it's, it's making your whole life fit around for about four to six months. This whole system of having a very soft diet, you, you're going to be in situations, you're going to be at restaurants and you have to order things. They're going to be consistent with keeping you safe. If you start to break the rules, you're going to break your temps and those in the temps break, it can cause the implants to break. So you really have to be on a soft diet. So again, biting up and down, right? That's okay. But when you start to chew, you go off the side, that action of chewing, that's what you can't be doing. So no chewing, no grinding. So again, if you have to chew food, then it's not okay. But there's some food you don't really have to chew. And that's the stuff that we tell people it's okay. You know, like the pastas. Um, um, uh, you can uh, obviously mash potatoes, yogurts, um, but you have to be really clear, careful. And this is why I make my teeth flat too. So it helps my patients. Um, so think about it. If my teeth are really flat, you're not going to be able to chew well anyways. And so it kind of helps patients stay on this right, right track. This video ended up going a lot longer. Um, let's see here. Now here's the two 911 emergencies while you're healing in temps. Um, if, the two, if the device starts to move or temporary breaks. That's where you got to call. We come in on the weekend. We make sure you get in right away, um, jump on a plane or come right in. But we need to just tighten the device back up because if you don't tighten it up, what will happen is uh, you're going to have, um, it'll cause micro movements. The same problem can cause implants to fail or a screw can break and that becomes a very big problem. Um, okay, so um, trust the process. Um, oh, if you have pain after three weeks, two or three weeks, go see your doctor. That's not normal. Uh, typically means something's wrong. And so um, unless you have, uh, we have delayed healing and you're not a healthy patient, but as a whole, you shouldn't be feeling any pain two or three weeks later. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go on to, okay. So preparing for the, la the next visit where they're going to make your teeth. It's really, really important. Again, you want to walk in the office and have everything right. So we go from surgery day to smile reveal the day next day. So like Mondays, we do surgery. Tuesday, you get your smile. Sometimes it might be Wednesday morning if I'm still, still tweaking it. But Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and then after that, we don't see our pickle. We'll, we'll, we'll have them come back in a week for a bite check. And after that, now we're not going to see our patients for four months. And the next visit would be basically called testing day. And testing day is basically, it's to find out, did the implants heal? Um, we call it um, big smile testing day. And so what it means is we look at the bone. Is the bone uh, healthy? Um, is the implant healthy and is there bone around it? Do we have bone loss? 
um, are the gums healthy? Um, and then we look at the overall smile and facial proportions and say, does, does do we pass the test? Meaning if it feels bulky in one area and it pushes the cheeks out, we need to adjust that before we go into our final calculations. So if you pass all the testing, then we schedule you for final calculations or impressions. And that's where basically we come back. Now, instead of we're just saying, is it good or bad? Now we're saying, okay, but where is it exactly? That's where we're gonna say, okay, we need to take it, we gotta get the calculation of exactly where the implant is with relation to the gums and to the teeth and to the face. And so you get calculations and locations for every single important thing in the big smile uh, uh, world, meaning bone, implants, gums, face. And so then we start to take all those calculations and we overlay them on top of each other. And then we start to basically say, okay, what do we want to change? And this is where if uh, if we've if I've given you chocolate or the doctor's given you chocolate and you're like a vanilla, or maybe you're a chocolate with little sprinkles, um, basically meaning that you want to change your smile just a little bit here or there, that's where we have something to go from. And we, we really can't change it until we have all that data, all the calculations. And so here's my advice for patients that, um, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, dang, iPhones, we always put the thing right there and you touch it, it turns off, drives me nuts. Um, here's my advice for patients that are coming in after they're all healed. First of all, don't rush the doctor. Let him take his time to really evaluate and analyze your smile. Okay. The way I do it is I first come in and ask my patients, what are the key things you'd like? First of all, what do you like about your smile? Okay. Compare it from your original. Now this one, what do you like? What changes did we make that were awesome? Secondly, what would you like to change? Write those down word for word, exactly what you say I'm going to write down. Then I come in and I look at all those calculations and I say, okay, I see what you're saying. Now I'm going to start to put a list together to make your final smile. The clearer you are, the easier it is for us to get to there. So this is where the, that four months is so critical. Um, you make sure that you get clear about what you want. So if you, I tell people, do your homework. Um, if there's a smile that you really like, that, like now that you have had your originals, now you have temporaries, now you can sit down and um, you can put a, a folder together of smiles you really like. And this will make it so the doctor can get to where you want faster. And so it's like, if you don't know where North is, you're not likely going to hit it. I mean, there's 360 degrees. If I know where North is for you, I'll get there much faster. So bring in pictures and just put down pictures. And um, I love it when my, my patients bring in stuff to help me get an idea of what they want. Um, but most of this should be handled really at the front end. Most of them already know what patients like um, from the pre, pre-surgery. But if patients uh, want to make changes, I tell them, we give uh, notebooks to our patients. Bring in your notebook every time and write down questions that you have and ideas about what you want to see in your final smile. Um, because there's all these questions, you, you know, you don't, there's not a lot of time. Like, oh, I love to answer questions. I'm very, very social. I love my patients to feel very, very connected to me. But the more prepared you are, I can just knock them off, right? Sometimes people forget their questions till they're gone, and then they call in, and then I'm with another patient, and it's hard to step out. And so bringing those questions with you uh, at the same time is great. Um, I think I've kind of covered that, but uh, I hope that you, this has been a good video. Um, I know it's been, you know, not necessarily the best quality, but the content has been awesome. And so for patients that are currently healing for all in four, I hope this has been useful for patients that are going to have all in four. Um, these are things your doctors should be talking to you about, but a lot of doctors are new at this and they mean well, they just haven't experienced the repetition that most of us that do this every day. And so these are things that are going to make you successful. It is a marriage between the doctor and the patient. And I can't win, no doctor can win if we're not all on the same team. So um, help your doctor, communicate well with him or her and they'll, and, and they'll do the same back to you. Um, and give them time because sometimes we don't know what you want. And I tell you, I will get there every time. Give me, you know, be patient. You see my reviews, you see my smiles. You see all the pictures and the, and the reviews and the uh, YouTube videos. I'll get there. I just got to get into your psyche to understand what it is that you want. And so, because, you know, love, uh, beauty is all the eye of the beholder, right? And so, but we do want you to have your dream smile, teeth. And and so, anyways, hope this has been helpful. If you have questions, I, I, I don't know if there were comments. Um, I have to run in. I have a patient, right, uh, about four minutes. So I have to run in there. Um,
But if you have questions later today, I'll have uh, I'll, I'll respond to them. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that uh, you can see when I'm going live. So it alerts you. Um, something I've been really great at, but I'd like to get people to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these just impromptu. Um, patient had a question. Like if you ask a question in the comments, I will, um, within the next month, I will put that a part of one of these conversations so that I answer them. And in the moment when I'm doing these, I can answer, answer questions also for you. So um, anyways, appreciate you guys watching and thank you. We'll see you guys later.